Hello, and welcome, welcome to the 2024 Drum Public Worship Service. It is so good to see your faces here. Today, we are particularly pleased to have so many of this community, of this collective, of family and friends and loved ones right here on Zoom. I know we are living in challenging times. People are engaged in war on nearly every continent around the globe. Hunger continues to harm our children in urban and rural and suburban areas all over the earth. And Mother Earth, she has to bear the burden of overwhelming pollution and pesticides. So many are suffering right now, but in the midst of a world on fire, we must still find our joy, our spirits, our minds, our hearts and our bodies need to have joy. Particularly when times are hard, we have to find ways to encounter and embrace joy. Maybe you didn't know it, but research has proven that joy boosts our very immune system that it fights stress and pain, that it improves our chances of living a longer, longer life. So tonight, this afternoon, or whatever time zone you are in, stop, take a breath, stretch out your arms open wide, get ready to sing. Yeah, you'll be muted when you sing, but open your hearts and stretch out your arms to embrace this evening, this afternoon, this time of joy and prepare yourself. There's gonna be a message of hope and joy from Reverend Ali K.C. Bell that you will not be able to turn away from. Ready, set, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. Let's get started and move into worship by calling the quarters. We want to offer you just a few short words to center us, to cleanse our sacred space, to ask for protection, and to welcome all of you all into community. Those present and those who have passed on are right here in this service tonight. We call the four quarters of the earth and the elements they represent. First, the North. I call the North. Spirits of the earth, we call to thee. Bring your stability and grounding energies to this space. Call to the East. Element of air, come to us. We call to you. Bring your intellect and inspiration to this sacred space. Lift our minds and hearts. I call to the South, spirit of fire, join us here. Guardians of the South, we call to you. Bring your passion, bring your transformation to this sacred space. Burn away all of our fears. I call to the West, element of water. We call to you, bring your emotional depth and healing to this sacred space. We call to you to soothe our spirits. Encendemos este fuego, buscando amor, buscando aceptación, buscando comunidad. We kindle this flame, seeking love, seeking acceptance, seeking community. Encendimos este fuego, sabiendo que tenemos regalos que ofrecer a nuestro mundo, sabiendo que somos suficientes, 
sabiendo que el miedo, la duda y la vulnerabilidad son regalos, no cargas. We kindle this flame, knowing we have gifts to offer our world, knowing that we are enough, knowing fear, doubt, and vulnerability are gifts, and not burdens. Encendemos este fuego, buscando justicia, apoyando a nuestros familiares, amigos, y a todo el colectivo drum. We kindle this flame, pursuing justice, supporting our relatives, friends, and the entire drum collective. Encendemos este fuego, llamamos a los antepasados y reclamamos a nuestras familias de hueso, sangre y elección. Que esta luz parriante caliente nuestros espíritus, ilumine el camino por delante y encienda la alegría que llevamos en nuestros cuerpos, mentes y espíritus. We kindle this flame, call upon the ancestors, and claim our families of bone, blood, and choice. May this flickering light warm our spirits, illuminate the path ahead, and ignite the joy we carry in our bodies, minds, and spirit. As we move deeper into our time together, let's pause and breathe in and let that breath out. And I ask you to join me in the spirit of prayer or meditation or whatever it is you do that centers yourself and calls up the best of the best from within. A prayer. O oh, source of sources, that which is larger than words allow, goddess, mother spirit, divine one, draw near, be with us now and come to this place to be with these people. Here we are standing on the precipice of joy. We find ourselves looking inward looking to each other, looking outward to all fronts, asking the ancestors for wisdom and guidance. Oh, source of sources, we know not what comes next. We know not exactly where life leads, but please come, help us move forward and help us hold fast. Shift our hearts gently so that we stay united and that we continue to trust one another. Here we are on the precipice of joy and promise. In all the days going forward, help us to look into our lives and look into each other's eyes. May we recognize that we have to find ways to build joy, to join together, that we must work as never before if we're to continue building the future that our ancestors dreamed of. Let us come together, hold our hands and hold our hearts, for alone we will surely fail. Separated, we face certain defeat, but together, oh, Mother Source, Together we could have it all and love it all and love each other. Come forth, give us strength. Help us to join our hearts and our minds. Help us to center our hopes on the future. Help us to gather together this community of blood and bone and choice. Help us to remember that joy lies at the center. Amen. Ashe. Blessed be.
Good evening, everyone, uh, wherever you are. It's our pleasure to be providing joy through music for you today. I am Sonder Choi, um, and we are here at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Santa Monica, and we are uh, the musicians of UUSM as well as Neighborhood Church. And this is uh, Wild and Precious by Leah Morris. <laughs> May I ever use my hands for lifting up? May I ever use my voice for speaking truth? May I consecrate each day and live with joy and wonder? May I sow in pieces all the wild things do? May I ever use my hands for lifting up? These hands were made for me. May I ever use my voice for speaking truth? This voice was made for truth. May I consecrate each day and live with joy and wonder. May I sow in pieces all the wild things do. There is peace. In the small town of Drum, there lived two neighbors, Kwame and Soli. Kwame, with her ever cheerful demeanor, was known throughout the village for her infectious laughter and warm smile. Soli, on the other hand, carried the weight of the world on their shoulders, their spirit crushed under the burden of life's hardship. Every morning, Kwame would greet Soli with a cheerful good morning and a basket of freshly baked bread. Soli would barely manage a nod in response, their face etched with lines of worry and sadness. Despite Soli's coldness, Kwame never gave up 
on trying to lift her neighbor's spirits. She would invite Soli over for tea, regaling them with funny stories and anecdotes from the village. But Soli remained unmoved, their hearts seemingly in a place of despair. As the seasons changed, Kwame noticed Soli withdrawing even more. They had everything delivered and they rarely left the house. Concerned, Kwame sought the advice of the village healer who spoke the words of the ancient proverb. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Determined to heal Soli's spirit, Kwame embarked on a mission to bring joy back into their life. She organized a village festival, complete with music, dancing, and games. Despite Soli's initial reluctance, Kwame convinced them to attend. As Soli watched the villagers laughing and enjoying themselves, something inside them began to stir. A long forgotten warmth spread through their chest. And for the first time in years, they found themselves smiling. From that day on, Soli's transformation was nothing short of miraculous. They started joining Kwame for morning walks, a few at a time. The two neighbors became inseparable. Their bond forged through shared laughter and newfound joy. As the years passed, Kwame and Soli became the embodiment of the proverb that had once guided them. Kwame's cheerful heart had been the medicine that healed Soli's crushed spirit. And in turn, Soli's newfound happiness breathed life back into Kwame's soul. This did not mean that Soli did not have hard days, but they became more bearable and easier to navigate with a friend. And so, in the town of Drum, the power of friendship and laughter prevailed, proving that even the deepest wounds could be healed with love and a lot of laughter. Let us now sing together, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. 208 on Albert Gray Hymnal.
This wouldn't be a worship service if there wasn't a time for an offering. Before that offering, I want you all to hear just a few words. DRUM is an organization that puts its heart, mind, and soul into nurturing a UU BIPOC collective. Your donations and offerings, many of which came in before this service, provide the substance required to sustain this community. We are a front door for people of color who are just discovering Unitarian Universalism. We are a growing spiritual home for the brown and black and tan and cream colored folks who've already found this beloved collective and this religious tradition. I want you to listen to the words of my dear friend and colleague, Reverend Viola Abbott, who shares a piece of her story that touches on the importance of the drum community in the lives of BIPOC folks, just like you and me. Here's Vi. I am the Reverend Viola Abbott, and I am the called minister at Coastal Virginia Unitarian Universalist in Virginia Beach, Virginia. But before that, I was a lay person, and that is where I first encountered drum. As one of the, at the time, two Black people who attended my congregation, I had my share of challenges. But it wasn't until one particular lay-led Sunday that I had really serious doubts about whether or not Unitarian Universalism was for me. I won't go into the details of what was said and was not said during that service, but I was moved to send a lengthy email to my minister, who was white, complaining about what happened and questioning whether or not I should be there. She wrote me an equally long email in response. While acknowledging the difficulties I faced, if I could go on, she encouraged me not to give up on Unitarian Universalism and suggested that not only did Unitarian Universalism have something to offer me, but that I might also have something to offer to it. And then she told me about DRUM, an organization that I had not heard about before. She knew that everything I needed I might not find in my congregation, but that DRUM might offer me the community that I did need to help me deal with some of the challenges that I was and would be facing as a Black person in a predominantly white denomination. I would have to say that were it not for drum, I would definitely not be a minister in this faith, and I would probably not be calling myself a Unitarian Universalist either. Drum made all the difference for me, and I am sure that it has made the difference to many people before me. And I hope that drum will continue to make the difference for people who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color who are a part of this tradition now and who will be part of this tradition in the future. And drum will with your financial support. I encourage you to give generously. Thank you.
Well, it wouldn't be an offering if we didn't have a blessing once we've received it. If you could put your hands up, palms facing your laptop or your PC or whatever it is you're using, and let's bless this offering that we received tonight and that some we received in advance together. We bless and receive these gifts, opening our hearts to true generosity. For we are grateful when we give be it our time, our talent, or our treasure. Forgiving brings us joy. And we are grateful for our needs and the experience of vulnerability, for it teaches us how to receive in community and in love. And we are grateful for all of those who share their gifts to nurture this community, this BIPOC collective, for it is a blessing for us to give, to receive, and to make a difference together. Amen. Won't you celebrate with me what I've shaped into a kind of life? I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay. One hand holding tight, my other hand, come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. In the hard times, I will 
reason strong. Cause I got joy, I got joy in my life, in my life. Sing it with me now. Y'all better sing that song. Mm, mm, mm. That was so good. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. That was beautiful. <sighs> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart help to bring forth a deeper understanding of our shared humanity, our commitment to liberation, and our connection to the universal love that holds us all. Amen. Last year, I was talking to the co-coordinators of our caring ministry team here at Cedar Lane, Betsy and Kathleen. We were discussing what new information to bring to the team in the new church year to help us be more effective in our pastoral care when faced with congregants and friends who are experiencing deep despair. We talked about strategies we've used and what the outcomes of those strategies were. Now here, I must admit that I am fortunate to be the minister who works with this caring team filled with people who have so much compassion, strength, and insight. Some of them are or were in caring professions before joining the team. Some have developed deep spiritual and somatic practices that impact everything they do in their lives. Needless to say, we were seeking something for a group of people who are pretty adept at doing the work they so graciously committed to doing. I can't remember exactly how we landed on a year long congregational read for our team, but it turned out to be one of the best ideas we have had for helping to deepen our understanding of joy, spiritual practice, and the mental immunity. I'll get back to that it takes to lead from joy. We decided to read the book of joy, lasting happiness in a changing world by the Archbishop Desmond Tutu and his holiness, the Dalai Lama. Two of us had read the book. For me, it was required reading for my chaplaincy residency training. And the other person is a voracious reader and retired. Do they actually do that? A social worker? So, we were ready. We set about meeting every month with the team. And what I discovered is that there are no shortcuts to joy. Maintaining joy actually requires a deep and intentional commitment to do, to be, and to live in joyfulness. What does that mean? Joy, as defined in the book, was about more than just the sweet moments that bring us happiness. Both Archbishop Tutu and His Holiness the Dalai Lama agreed that joy and happiness were not the same. The Dalai Lama spoke about how happiness often depends on external conditions, whereas joy is more enduring the, and a, enduring the things that arise from an inner state of mind. He highlighted the importance of cultivating inner qualities like compassion, and gratitude to experience true joy, regardless of external circumstances, mental immunity. Archbishop Tutu echoed this sentiment, emphasizing that joy can coexist with suffering and it's not dependent on having everything go perfectly in life. He shared personal anecdotes and experience from, experiences from his own life and the lives of others to illustrate how joy can be found in the midst of adversity. As the Archbishop stated, joy subsumes happiness. Joy is actually in a comprehensive emotion that is included in contentment, in relief, in pleasure, 
delight, and pride. We also know that there is a type of joy that comes when we rejoice at another suffering. I know, I know it is hard to think about joy in a space of unhealthy emotion, yet it is there. It is there because we are humans. It is a small part of who we are and who we hope to grow out of, or maybe that's just me. When we own up to our own stories and regardless of shame, we become the tellers and the holders of our authentic selves, we own who we are. How often has it given you a sense of relief just to be, to say, and to do who you truly are in your life? Often these moments of clarity, perception, and understanding of self Give us the courage to continue when the adversity beyond is beyond anything that we thought we could experience. We understand that we can overcome. Our stories are the canons of our lives. Author and poet Cole Arthur Riley addresses how we show up for ourselves and others in relationship to joy in her book, This Here Flesh spirituality, liberation, and the stories that make us. She states, joy, which once felt as frivolous as love to me, has become a central virtue in my spirituality. I am convinced that if we are to survive the wait for justice and liberation, we must become a people capable of delight. There are those of us who are such serious people that to be playful feels foolish, and maybe it is, but I think when we give ourselves to play, the scope of our lives expands. We become freer in our bodies. We give ourselves to imagination and make-believe. This takes down our defenses and allows us to move and be without expectation of immediate tragedy. After all, it is only in anticipation of sorrow that joy seems frivolous. We become so used to bracing for the next devastation, we don't have time or emotional energy to rejoice. For some of us, this moves us to a permanent seriousness, always on guard against the evils of this world. Some of us even begin to believe we are not worthy of pleasure or play. That reading connects to our guiding scriptures, Proverbs 17, 22, which reads, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Our story illuminated it so well, and I'm so thankful for Jakaran Ola Oya for that story. I know that many of us are not Christian, and some of us do not particularly care what the Bible has to say. If this is how you're feeling, please bear with me. I'm going somewhere, somewhere here. I think it's important to know where we came from, to understand how we got here, and where we are going. And the we that I'm referring to is Unitarians and Universalists. Proverbs is often considered a book of wisdom offering practical advice on various aspects of life, including morality, ethics, relationships, justice, equity, responsibility, and diligence. Of course, as Unitarian Universalists, we are taught to examine the text for our own understanding. William Ellery Channing, a very kind of important minister in American Unitarianism, stated in his Unitarian Christian sermon in 1819 that this sermon, this sermon that he had defined what Unitarian was, I need to say that. And I'm going to paraphrase it because it was written in 1819 and I think we should all just have it for understanding. He stated that we profess not to know a book which demands a more frequent exercise of reason than the Bible. Now all books and all conversation require in the reader or hearer to use the constant exercise of reason. 
or the true meaning is only to be obtained by continual comparison and inference. And still more, the Bible expects us to assume that we would help to put into perspective its language by the known truth which observation and experience furnish on these topics. So as a faith, we have grown beyond our ecumenical connections to the Bible. We seek many texts to understand our world, and thus all of the texts that I mentioned today, I consider spiritual text. To see joy from the perspective of people like Cole Riley, the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and His Holiness the Dalai Lama, we must cultivate a joyful heart. To cultivate a joyful heart, we must allow it to be open. This means that we must first get to know our own hearts. We must know and acknowledge our hurts and the ways in which we hurt others. We must acknowledge what we carry and what holds us back from living into our true selves. We must study that which elevates our lives and surround ourselves with people who are too seeking to elevate their lives. Now, does this mean we think that people who aren't on our path to intentionally living in joy aren't good enough or wise enough or elevated enough? No, it means that we meet people where they are, but we don't allow their path to become our own. Let me say it again, we meet people where they are and yet we don't allow their past to become our own. We set a framework of what joy means to us, study how we impact our own environment and health through the practice of joy and move forth using joy as the liberatory tool that it is so that when we do meet people who've not intentionally chosen joy, we don't find ourselves unintentionally collecting all of their stuff. Sometimes we feel empathetic and we feel that their load is too heavy for them to hold alone. I get that. And I've been there. What I'm asking to do for all of us, for all of us to do, is to choose, to choose to journey on that path with them. Choose to pick up what we can hold and trust others to help them hold the rest. When we intentionally travel with them along their path, we also intentionally live into the principles and values that we espouse and radiate joy in the process. This simple practice will start to change the energy in and around us. Like any other form of energy, kinetic or potential, we must do the work to move an object. The object that we are moving is anything that does not cultivate joy for us. Once we exert the energy of joy, we will transform the load. So you see, if you are doing the work of joy, we must determine for ourselves that joy is actually worth pursuing. It isn't easy when you start, but just like every other muscle, when you exercise it, it becomes easier and easier to use every time. To put it simply, we must do the work of joy to maintain joy. So at this point, you're probably saying, Reverend Ali, does that mean I just go around being happy and ignoring the hard things in my life? I am categorically not saying to do that. However, I am asking you that when you face those adversities, acknowledge them for what they are. They are finite. Acknowledge that you don't have to face them alone. Acknowledge and feel the emotion of them and then tell yourself, this is a moment in my life, not the blueprint of my life. This hard place that I'm in right now, this deeply painful, emotional place that I'm feeling right now can and will change. Archbishop Tutu stated, 
discovering more joy does not, I'm sorry to say, save us from the inevitability of hardship and heartbreak. In fact, we may cry more easily, but we laugh more easily too. Perhaps we are just more alive. Yet as we discover more joy, we can face suffering in a way that ennobles rather than embitters. We have hardship without becoming hard. We have heartbreak without becoming broken. This is the work of an intentional joy practice. Many of us have seen way too much, way too much, not to understand the dangers of the world and the uncertainties that we're living in, but how we catalog what we see and experience has a profound effect on how we live. Imagine for a moment, just imagine with me what it would mean if you could face those adversities and not drown in them, but tread the waters knowing that weeping may linger for a night, but joy, yes, aha, joy cometh in the morning. Amen, ashe, and blessed be. really joyous and so I would like to bless all of you with a prayer to go forth in joy be at peace for the world loves you as you are listen to the trees and their stories of witness and survival understand their memories and take shelter in their roots. Be filled with the fertile seeds of love, planting them in the desolate corners we encounter with the intention that our love, our love, our being, will transform this desolation we, into a garden of hope. And when we cross into this landscape, we call home. 
now blessed and see the fruits and blossoms that we have sown out of this love. Let us embrace the joy of this lush, fragrant garden called us. Go forth fearless, rooted, and ready to thrive in joy, beloveds. Blessings all. Esta noche apagamos nuestro velita, pero sigamos conectados unos con otros. Tonight, we extinguish our chalice, yet remain connected to one another. Que el amor, la esperanza y la alegría nutran nuestras mentes, alimenten nuestros cuerpos y sostengan nuestras almas. May love, hope, and joy nurture our minds, feed our bodies, and sustain our souls. Aunque debamos separarnos, dejemos que las brasas ardientes de nuestra fe elegida, el universalismo unitario, sigan siendo una fuente constante de calidez espiritual dentro de esta comunidad intencional y más allá. Though we must separate, let the glowing ember of our chosen faith, Unitarian Universalism, remain a constant source of spiritual warmth within this intentional community and beyond. Let my voice be strong, let my voice be heard, let them hear me when I cry out loud, and if I tremble, I will take your hand, and so to from this place of our meeting in between ones and zeros, knowing that your voice is strong, that your joy is intentional, that your story is yours. Know that this time is here and now and joy is the tool of liberation. 
May it be so. Amen. Anashe. As we leave this place, we just want to thank you all for your presence. I want to thank the Reverend Ali Sonder and the amazing musicians at Santa Monica, each of the officiants of this service, and all the volunteers who make drum a powerful, meaningful ministry in our faith. We are here 365 days a year. We are building, whether you're joining from your home, churches, cafes, across the country, around the world, tuning in through live stream, or here with us in this intimate Zoom congregation. Thank you for your support of DRUM, for our people of color ministry, which enriches our community and extends the reach of our shared mission. Blessed be, have a wonderful evening, afternoon, or morning, wherever you are. Take care.